In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of a sequence, and we're going to talk about what it means for a sequence to converge. So the definition of a sequence is actually pretty straightforward, um, and we're saying that a sequence is basically just a function whose domain is the natural numbers. Okay, remember, the natural numbers n are just the counting numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on. So the way that maybe you might be more used to thinking of a sequence is as an ordered list of real numbers. So for example, a sequence might be 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 quarter, etc. Okay, so what we want to understand is how is that a function whose domain is the natural numbers? Well, if we lay out the natural numbers over the top here, so we start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is n along here, and then for each n, there is a corresponding value of our sequence a n. Okay, another way to visualize this is to draw a picture. So for this particular sequence, we start here at 1, we're going 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 quarter, 1 fifth, 1 sixth, etc. So that's 1 there, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, so it's a function whose domain is the natural numbers. That means that it's infinitely long. So usually we're interested in what happens to a sequence as we hit the tail of it. Okay, so often there's some stuff that happens up front, but we are usually more interested in what happens long term with our sequence. In particular, does our sequence settle down to some fixed limit or not? Okay, so we have a bit of notation. I might note, write down a sequence as a n or a n. Okay, or I might just write down the numbers like that, um, or I might put braces around them like this. Okay, there are quite a few ways of expressing a sequence, but the main thing to keep in your keep in mind is that it's basically just an ordered list of numbers, and also remember that it's what happens at the end of the list that's usually most relevant. Okay, so. We talked in the last slide about what it means to, well, about sequences converging to a number somehow. Now, the definition for a sequence converging is one that we're going to use extremely often. Um, and by the time you finish this course, you'll be quite familiar with this way of talking. But at first, the first time you encounter a definition like this, it looks actually pretty complicated. So let's just break it down. A sequence a n, that's just a sequence, converges to a real number a. Okay, so the definition includes the number that it converges to, if for every positive number epsilon, there exists a natural number, capital N, such that whenever you go past this natural number, whenever little n is greater than or equal to capital N, it follows that a n minus a, okay, your sequence value minus the number that you're hoping it converges to, is less than epsilon. Okay, now this is quite a hard one to wrap your head around. So let's just draw a picture. And let's sketch a sequence that is converging to a number and see what this definition means. Okay, so it says that for every, now the key word here, every, every positive epsilon, okay, so no matter which epsilon we choose, then we must be able to find an n. So for every epsilon, there exists an n. This is a very common pattern. For every positive number epsilon, so no matter which one we choose, we should be able to find a particular n such that something or other is true. So let's see what that means in this case here. So we've, we've got our sequence um, and we're trying to test whether or not it converges to this value here, which is a. So it's saying that no matter which epsilon we choose. So let's just choose an epsilon and see how this works. So I'm going to choose epsilon just here. Absolute value of a n minus a being less than epsilon. That means that we must be within this band. This will be a plus epsilon. This will be a minus epsilon. So what, this, what the definition says is if I choose my epsilon, I need then to find an n so that if I go beyond this n, so my n in this case will be here. I'll put it here just to be safe. 
for us it equals 4, such that if I go beyond this, every element of the sequence beyond n equals 4 is within this band. Okay, so we're imagining that we've gotten, we've drawn our little band, we've chosen, so step one is we choose an epsilon, then we find an n and show all terms beyond a n are in region. Okay, so that's for this particular choice of epsilon. We've shown if we can, we've found our n equals four, and we've shown that everything is within this little band beyond there. However, the definition says something stronger than that. It doesn't say for a particular choice of epsilon. It says for any choice, I can find an n. So if I go and make another choice now, let's rub these out and go in closer. So now I'm making a smaller choice of epsilon. Can I find an n for this choice of epsilon? And it turns out I can, so let's get rid of the previous one. Now I can go, I have to go over to here. And this will be n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. n equals 8. Now if I go beyond n equals 8, everything is within this band. So to show that a sequence converges, we need to be able to find what n is for any choice of epsilon. So if I made epsilon incredibly small, we'd expect that n would be incredibly large. So it also makes sense that our choice of n is going to depend on epsilon in some way, because the smaller epsilon gets, the larger n has to get, so the two must be related. So the easiest way to see this is by actually looking at an example, which we'll do next. So let's use the definition to show that the sequence 1 over root n converges to 0. Okay, so notice when we're using the definition of convergence of a sequence, we need to know the number that it converges to ahead of time. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, the basic pattern is we choose epsilon greater than zero. Okay, so we're choosing an epsilon. Now we need to find an n such that the absolute value of our sequence minus our limit value, which we're hoping exists, is less than our epsilon for all little n's greater than or equal to big N. Okay, so for this particular case, we might take this inequality here. And we know that n is positive, so we can strip away the absolute value signs. This means that 1 over root n is less than epsilon. Okay, which means alternatively that n is greater than 1 over epsilon squared. Okay, so we're doing a little bit of scratch working down here. Um, so why don't we say choose n to be greater than 1 over epsilon squared. Okay, then what we can say, so choose n such that n is greater than 1 over epsilon squared. Then if n is greater than or equal to n, then n is also greater than 1 over epsilon squared, which implies that epsilon is going to be greater than 1 over the square root of n. Um, or absolute value of 1 over square root of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. Okay, so what we've done is we've found a capital N such that for all little n's greater than it, our statement about distance from the sequence term here to the limit value 0 is less than epsilon here. 
Okay, so the, the pattern is for showing that a sequence converges is always the same. It's we choose epsilon equals to zero. We choose epsilon greater than zero. This is an arbitrary choice. And for that particular chosen epsilon, we need to then find an n so that the following thing is true. Okay, and often finding the n is the hardest bit. Okay, so here we did some working off to one side and we found our n, so we chose n such that that was true. And then it was relatively straightforward to show that this inequality here was true and so we're okay. And you can just go back to the top. This is going to be true no matter which value of epsilon we choose. And so we can conclude that our sequence converges to zero. And the way we write this is we write the limit as n tends to infinity of 1 over root n equals 0. So here's an interesting one. Here's a theorem. The limit of a sequence when it exists must be unique. Okay, that means that I can't have a sequence that converges to two different values. And intuitively that makes a lot of sense. But let's just see if we can marry this up to the definition. So if I had a sequence that eventually converged to these two different values here, let's just call them a and b, then what the definition says is that if I go far enough across to the right, so let's just assume that we've zoomed out a long, long way, and by the time we go out to here, n is big. Um, and so what we've got is, so if we go far enough, then for any choice of epsilon, we must be able to go within an epsilon band of that value. So I'm not going to prove this right now, but I can demonstrate kind of how it works. If we choose a small enough value of epsilon, it's not possible for our sequence values to be within epsilon of both A and B. Okay, so if epsilon is bigger, then the two intervals can overlap, and that's fine. But if we make epsilon small enough, based on what a and b are, and you can think of perhaps what that value should be. Well, if we look at the, dis the distance between a and b is a minus b. So if we make epsilon smaller than half that distance, then the two intervals are not going to overlap. And so the, you can practice putting this into formal language if you like, but the idea behind this theorem is that so long as we go far enough across, it's not possible for our sequence values to be both within this region here and within this region here.